What's up YouTube? It's me, Justin. I'm an opera singer. Today's video is Patron Pick of the Month, and for this month, they have chosen the Doll Aria, sung by Patricia Janikova. I think that's how you say her name. Just a disclaimer, I have seen this performance it's been a while. However, I'm super excited to get into the music and maybe pay attention to things I didn't pay attention to before. Let's go. How is it? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me pause here just really quickly. Can I say I love the added effort of all that they did right now. They didn't have to do all of this. For me, I feel like, A, you saw all the audience laughing. That really created a very calming, very inviting atmosphere. I also think that it helps create a scene so, so nicely. I also love the relationship between um, the male character. I'll explain his character later and also the doll how he was handling her came in carrying her in and then you can see he got a little bit frustrated as she was walking away and then he went to go grab her and put her back in her place I think that also shows the dynamic between their relationship let's rewind a little bit to get back into this part see how he grabs her <laughs> her face
good. Okay. Let me pause here. Let's um, actually start with giving a little bit of a background on this aria and this opera, just in case you have no idea what's happening, right? It's a very famous piece, but knowing the story will give some context to what is going on. So this aria is from an opera called The Tales of Hoffman, Le Comte d'Hoffman, composed by Jacques Offenbach. Now, this opera is considered to be in the genre opera fantastique, which uh, deals with sci-fi, uh, horror, and fantasy, right? You can incorporate all of these elements within this genre of opera. Now, this particular opera is centered around three stories written by a man called E.T.A. Hoffman. We'll call him Mr. Hoffman for short. And Mr. Hoffman is the protagonist of this entire opera. This aria, named Les Oiseaux dans la Charmille, is also known very famously as the doll aria. This particular aria happens in act one, which is titled Olympia. Olympia is the name of the doll. Now, what is happening here is Olympia essentially was created by two people. You have the scientist whose name is Spallanzani, Sp Spallanzani, yes, and also another person named Copelius, yes. Now, I believe the gentleman who is handling Olympia is Spallanzani, the scientist who is the main creator of Olympia, the doll. I like how he's handling her because you can see that dynamic and this is essentially his pride and joy, right? You can see he's very proud of his work, gets frustrated when something goes wrong and he's trying to shine her up by pinching her cheeks, making her look good and um, putting her in the right position. You can tell this is his pride and joy. Now, what is happening in this aria and in this moment of the opera is Mr. Hoffman, the protagonist of the opera, has fallen in love with Olympia, the doll, but he is unaware that she is a doll. <laughs> now, Cop Copelius, who is also taking on the character named Nemesis um, through some sort of like incarnation, Copelius sells Mr. Hoffman, who is in love with the doll, these magic glasses that makes Olympia appear as a real woman. Uh, what's happening is she is being run down. Mr. Spallanzani, her creator, comes back and has to wind her up. And winding her up allows her to continue singing. Now, Mr. Hoffman takes all of these gestures, uh, the words that she is saying, he takes this as a, a return of affection to him. So this is where we are right now in this moment. Let's dive into the music. I do have the sheet music and I'll of course post it up right here for you all to see. Looking at this music, I love the visuals that you can see right off the bat. Right in the melodic line, you've got all of these running scales going, starting high, kind of dipping a little bit, going back high, then really dipping, then going high and even higher, dipping a little bit just to kind of move around and then go high and do this trill. You've got all of these movements and you see those little dots above each note. Those are what we call staccati. So they're nice and crisp and short. I'm thinking of this as piano, pretend this is piano. In the left hand, you see those staccati notes going on still arpeggiated in the left hand. Now I think this is a perfect representation of the doll because the doll has these very short and sudden and crisp and sharp movements within a doll, right? You don't get that natural ease of flow that you would get, let's say, in a human being. And I think this is a great representation of that. You've got these crisp, sharp, and very um, articulate movements going pretty quickly. And at the same time, you have them kind of moving up and down all over the place. Just like she is perfectly fine, then she winds down, she needs to be wound up again. Oh, okay, she's wound up and now she's ready to sing. Perfect, perfect visual illustration of what's going on. Now, the first thing I wanna say about Miss Patricia is I love her vowels. My God, are her vowels bomb. They are so good and I think, in, not I think, I know, in an aria such as this, the vowel is so important because of how much coloratura is going on. You've got all of these notes going on. Yes, you need to have those notes crystal clear and on center pitch before you actually start singing it, right? That's 
the number one point. But to help get through those notes really is focusing on the vowel. And if you can keep the vowel um, pure and centered and have that as your main focus, because you can rely on the fact that you've studied enough and know all the notes, then that will help get all of those notes out. <laughs> hear the pureness of the vowel on each and every crisp note. Beautiful. What I also want to point out is I love that her mouth isn't doing a lot while she's spewing these notes up and out of her body. You can see as she is singing, her mouth just stays in a pretty neutral position while she is maneuvering up and in through all of these notes. <laughs> beautiful demonstration of the idea that your mind is doing the work for you and as a result your body will produce the sound that your mind wants oh my god i do want to point out that i absolutely love her quarter notes yes her agility is great and her her quarter notes are fantastic so looking at the music what is this one two three the fourth system the very first measure you got these pretty big leaps. You got a big leap in the first measure and a big leap in the second measure. I love the way that she sang each of these quarter notes connected the bottom note to the top note so it didn't sound like she was crash landing into that bottom note. <laughs> came from a very supportive place. What I also loved about her quarter notes was the vibrancy in each note. You heard a beautiful vibrato right as she sang the note, and I think that gives some life to the overall note. <laughs> Yes.
<laughs> okay, okay. Let's pause here. I loved the way that she's executing the wind down effect. So particularly, I really loved the first time. The first time she did like her wind down effect, she had pure straight tone. My God, it was piercing. And that straight tone was so, so dead center pitch. The resonance was fantastic. And as a result, the sound just pinged right through. And I loved how she kept on that straight tone as she was moving down. And then towards the very last part of her kind of crashing down, you know how dolls kind of do this, she added her vibrato. Oh my God, that was so genius. And you'll notice the second time she added more staccatis to kind of show, oh, okay, we're really malfunctioning here. Hurry up, Mr. Spallanzani, and come wind me up so that I can sing again. And you'll notice when he did those extra windups that um, indicated, okay, she should be pretty good at least till the rest of the song. I like the differentiation between the two wind downs. Now, if you notice, this aria essentially repeats itself twice, but the second time it uses different words, strophic form. And what is done in this aria is the second time that it is sung with different words, the singer has the freedom to add certain notes, um, take away notes and kind of do what they think is fitting for the character within that moment. There is a moment where she sang these extra super high notes, these very um, almost harsh movements that go hand in hand with the staccati, the short notes, and just the way that a doll moves. <laughs> So there was this um, cadenza moment, um, I believe right after the one of the high E flats. Let's go look at the music. She sings these, these very quick uh, 16th note triplets. That's 
very, very fast. Um, and she's got to squeeze in a good amount of notes. This is actually a high C. As she was moving through all of these very rapid notes, you'll notice her hand was kind of shaking and moving down with her as she was going down the uh, notes within the cadenza. <laughs> think that this actually might have helped her just navigate through this very, very, very difficult part within the song. This whole song is difficult, but especially this part. What makes this part difficult is the movement within the 16th triplet. So your very first movement starts on a high C. That's when she puts her right hand up in doll gesture to sing that note. The next triplet starts on an A flat, which is a major third away. Then the third triplet starts on an E flat, which is a perfect fourth down. Then the very next one goes back up to an A flat, a perfect fourth movement up, then goes down back to an E flat, a perfect fourth down. So you've got all of these triplets that are starting leaps away from each other. That is what makes this very difficult. Finding the uh, first note within each triplet is going to be very essential to helping you navigate each and every triplet. She's doing this very well. What I think is also helping her though is when she puts her hand up, you notice her hand is kind of moving down as she's going down this cadenza part. And I think that might be helping her get through all of those notes. Of course, going to compliment that high E flat. It was brilliant. And I think brilliant is the perfect word because it was placed to me in the perfect spot. She started it too with immediate vibrato. Oh my God, that makes all the difference. <laughs> if you notice, her upper teeth were showing on that higher E flat note in comparison to the high C. Brilliant. If you liked all that you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Also leave a comment down below, what other aria or even art song should I do for a performance analysis? Lastly, make sure you check out my description box below for ways that you can get in contact with me, support the channel, get access to exclusive perks, such as my newly revamped Patreon page, and or take a voice lesson with me. I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye.